My title is God is and consuming fire. My subtopic is he is my everything. So thinking back over my life, I can remember as a young adult, just starting out, making my own decisions, I was not concerned with or even thinking about the calling or what God had in store for me. And putting on a white collar and preaching the word, I, I, that wasn't even a concern of mine. But I do remember the prayers of my mother. I do remember that God came through for her over and over again and being there and meeting our needs as a child. I can still remember that moment that I got saved and started my walk with God. It was probably the second time I had went to church in Germany. Terrence was going every Sunday. I would even get up, help him get the girls ready, and they would go. He would ask me every Sunday, you going? And every Sunday I would say, nah, I'm good. I'll see y'all when y'all get home. And when he got home, I had cooked, dinner, house clean. Everything was good. But I was still missing that, you know, missing it. I'm sure people were like, I see the girls, I see the husband, I know there's a wife somewhere, but I just, I didn't want to go. I didn't, it was not something that I wanted to do. So this one Sunday I, that I decided to go, the pastor, he was, we were closing out and he opened the doors to the church. And I said, everybody was standing up, I said, right back down. I'm not joining this church. I went to church as a child, you know, did all of that, went to church, went to the revivals, sat back, didn't do much. It just was it wasn't me. Then he said, can everybody stand up? Everybody stood up. He said, if Jesus was standing at that back door right now, and he said, pick up your cross and follow me. And if you have everything in order, and you can pick up your cross and you can follow him. Sit back down. Y'all turn and sit down. I looked over, he was sitting down. He left me standing up by myself. And I said, I know he didn't just leave me standing up here by myself. But he did. We had only been married like probably six, seven months. But he already had his relationship with God. I didn't. He already knew who God was. He already knew what God can do. He had seen him work before. I had seen him work on my mom's behalf, but I didn't have that type of relationship with him for myself. But now that I do, I know that I know that I know that he is my everything. I've seen him work on my behalf because of my relationship with him. Not because of my mom's relationship, not because of my husband's relationship, not because of my bishop's relationship, I've seen him work for myself. I've seen him heal me. I witnessed him kill generations of curses, break them. The things the women went through in my family, I didn't want, to, want my girls to have to go through that. I wanted those strange fires put out. So I couldn't depend on the prayers of my husband and my mom alone. I needed to get to know him for myself. I had to learn to depend on God to help me through it all. And that's just what he did. God is an all-consuming fire. And that consuming fire is a very part of my life. My reference scripture tonight is Hebrews 12 and 25, 12 and 25 through 29, the New King James Version. 25, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if you do not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much shall we, much shall, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, yes, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. 27, now this yet once more indicates the removal of the things that are shaken and those that are made the things which cannot be shaken. 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we have served God acceptably with, with reference and godly freedom. 
for God, 29, for God is and consuming fire. Reading Hebrews 12, thinking back on growing up as a child and hearing my mom saying a hard head will make a soft behind. In life, we find ourselves in situations where we wanted our parents to come get us out, come get us out of it without us learning from it. And because they came and helped us out, we found ourselves right back in that same place soon after without learning a lesson, without learning from that lesson. We should have been taught at the time. This month, the theme is no strange fire. I can remember getting my stuff into a whole lot of strange fires growing up as a young adult. I wanted God to get me out of it as soon as I got myself into them. Maybe it was, it was because I didn't want to look bad to others. Maybe it was because I was a Christian. I paid my tithe, so why am I going through this? Or maybe I just thought because I'm a good person, knowing when he spoke and told me not to do what I did to get myself into the situation, I didn't listen, which is why I'm in the situation that, I, that I'm in now. In verse 25, he tells us not to refuse him who speaks. But because I refused him, knowing I heard him, and in a place where it seems that, and now I'm in a place where it seems that I, as if I can't breathe, I'm asking everyone who can pray, everyone who can pray to pray for me, my husband, the bishop, my friends, everyone. If you had a relationship with God, please pray for me. I need a help to get out of this fire that I went through, even though he told me not to. I still went in it. Even after he told me not to, I had a lesson to learn. It was a hard lesson, but even in that place, I had to give thanks. This is a lesson and a testimony to help somebody else. It was hard, but he was still there. Going through the fire doesn't mean you're going to come out smelling like smoke. It only meant that a hard head will make a soft behind. He was still right there, guiding and pulling me through the fire, even in everything he pulling me through, even in the fire, he gave everything, he gave me everything I needed, just not in my timing. It was just a lesson in the mess that I had made. My first point is, if it's causing you frustration or disturbing your peace, set it aside. If it's causing you frustration or disturbing your peace, set it aside. Anything or anyone that's causing fires in your life needs to be put out. Hebrews 12 and 27. Now this, yes, yet once more indicate the removal of things that are shaken, that are being shaken as the things that are being made, that the things which cannot be shaken remain. Saying that I remember if you can't, here's a saying that I remember, if you can't stand the fire, get out the kitchen. Because in most of our lives, it gets very hot sometimes. And at some point, it got really, really hot. And most likely will get hot again. But those family and friends that in, that's in the kitchen with you shouldn't be causing you to get burned or causing you to keep getting burned time and time again. Because we, are, because we keep putting up with the same people or things we refuse to let go of because we just want to keep them around. It's like a small child learning to walk or pull up. You yell and you tell them, don't touch that or don't pull it down because you know it's gonna cause them some type of pain. You still, have, you still have to see and go through it for yourself to find out that what your parent, that your parents were really right. Take my oldest daughter, for instance. My oldest daughter loved messing with ant beds. At first, it was the small sugar ants is what we called them. They didn't harm her much. She thought they were cute. But one day she stood in that fire ant bed and baby, they told them little feet up, blisters everywhere. Bet you can't tell her after time and time again of me telling her, leave them ant alone. She had blisters everywhere, all over her feet. And she cried and has been scared of them ever since. Our hard head will make a soft behind her. I remember when Trinity was only nine months old. She had her first one in with the oven door. Both of our hands had blisters on them. We even made a trip to the ER. I'm not sure if she remembered what happened because she was so young. But even now, you can't pay her to go near an oven without some oven mittens or a towel to pull that pan out of the oven. 
So why as adults and God's children do we keep touching that oven door over and over again, letting the same people and things into our space that's disturbing our peace and causing us frustration over and over again? Hebrews 12 and 1 tells us to lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us and to let us run this race with endurance that's set, that's set before us. We cannot win a race carrying dead weight. People, people and things that are causing us to be weighed down. Why do we keep praying for peace and wondering why we're not getting? Is it because we're refusing to let those people or things go? We keep telling ourselves, this is not how things are supposed to be. We cannot, we, we keep doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result time after time. Praying that God changes things. As soon as he removes the people or the thing, we go right back to him, right back every single time. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love her. That's my family. I don't know how to let go. Then why you keep going to God asking him to remove them? He removed them time and time again, but we still run back to the same fire, running right back in the same fire time and time again. Who in their right mind, who in their right mind keeps touching that same hot pan? Why do we keep putting ourselves in the same predicaments over and over again? Why? And then we want God to help get us out of it. He's done his part. We're the ones that keep running back into the fire. We keep burning ourselves. He's done his part. It's us. We keep going back over and over and over again. Oh, I love her. She's the love of my life. I can't live without her. But he showed you her time and time again. As the saying goes, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Why do we keep doing it over and over and over again and wondering why we keep finding ourselves in the same place over and over again? Is it him? I think not. It's us. We have to let it go. At some point, we have to want better for us. God already wants better for us. He's already paved the way. At some point, we have to want better for us. He's already done it. He's already set the road before us. Are we taking his road? Or are we veering off? Ask yourself that question. Are we on his road or are we veering off? Do we want to do it ourselves? If we want to do it ourselves, then quit going to him. It's not, it's not a hard decision. If he keep knocking you upside the head, why you keep running back into it? Sometimes we hear him. We hear exactly what he says 99% of the time. But if it don't look good to us, we don't want it. I'm going to get to that point in a little while. Point number two, he disciplines us because he loves us. As a child, I used to think there is no way she can love me and beat my behind like this. Then I had the nerve to tell me, it's because I love you and I want what's best for you. But as a parent, I now understand that, that discipline your kids helps them to understand right from wrong. And as a parent, it really, really does hurt us more than it hurts them most of the time. But either you learn it at home or you learn it in the streets. The streets are, are way harder on you because guess what? They don't care for you or love you half, half as much as your parents do. Learning that her correcting me making sure that I didn't go back and make the same mistake over and over again, because if I did, the punishment would be way greater than it was the last time. She wanted what was better for me, better than what she had. She didn't want me to have to work like she had to work. And most importantly, she really, really does love me. Love, she really, really did love me. It's the same way with God. He lets us go through stuff so that we can learn, so that we can help the next person. We are a living testimony. He will never put more on us than we can bear. It's funny that we would take correction from our bosses. We would take correction from anyone in authority. But when it comes to the one, the one who wakes us up every morning, the one who breathes life into us day after day, 
the one who goes before us into those jobs, into those restaurants that we go sit down and eat, the one who goes before us anywhere we want to go, the one who goes before us when we're traveling up and down the highways and the byways to make sure we are covered daily. That's the one we have a problem with correcting us. As soon as we feel like this is too much, what we hear, church ain't for me, but as soon as you need him, you run right back to the church because you figure, oh yeah, that's why I can find him. Not that, not knowing that you are the church, not knowing that you are the church and he's everywhere you are. Hebrews 12 and nine. Furthermore, we have human father who corrects us and we pay them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? He corrects and disciplines us because he loves us. He loves us and knows us better than we know ourselves. So why do we have such a huge problem when it comes to God disciplining us? We'll go to work, we get there on time, we go to lunch when they say go to work, we leave when they say leave. I see at my job, they say mandatory over time. We don't have a problem with it. We think, oh, my check gonna be this and my check gonna be that. Mm, is it? Because the more you make, the more taxes they take out. But we don't have a problem with doing what they want us to do. We don't have a problem with submitting to the world, but we have a problem submitting to God and the ones he set forth over us. We have a problem with that. That's a problem for us. Why? Why is it that we have a problem with the leader he's given us, but we don't have a problem with, we don't have a problem, we obey the laws because half of us don't want to go to jail. Me, I, I can't do it. We have a problem with, with that. But when it comes to, pastor said, can you do this? Pastor said, can you do that? And don't let pastor make a mistake because we can judge pastor. But, and we can sit around and we can talk about bishop but we don't want nobody talking about us. That's the problem. God lets us go through all of this stuff to show us that there's discipline behind the mistakes that you make. I tell my kids, the one thing I don't want you to do is make a mistake you can't come back from. And as long as you're alive, you can come back from it. As long as you're well and in your right mind, you can come back from it. So God, yes, he let us go through this stuff. And he pulls us right up out of it every single time. Every single time. Like some of us should not be where we are in life. But God, but God, God is there every single time we go back. We forget that part though. And we'll do whatever our boss say. We show up when he say show up. We wear what they tell us to wear. We do whatever they tell us to do. They say, walk on this side, we walk on this side. And God forbid those, forbid those who sit in jail, they have to do everything. And when they get there, that's when they find God. He's still there. He still makes sure they come home most of the time. But as soon as they come home, they turn their back on him again. I think it's time that we get it right and keep it right. My next point is, God is speaking. God is always speaking. Are we always listening? How many times do we go to him with something we want? And we get it for the most part. We want a promotion. Pastor stands up and say, promotion is here. We'll sit our whole wallet up there on the pulpit. Because we're trying to get somewhere. Most of the time we get it. The job we wanted, the relationship we wanted, God, please send me a good man. And guess what? He gives us the job. And we walk around. This is me using me for an example. Walk around with my head in the air, so far in the air. I forgot how I got the job or why I got the job. Because of who I'm connected to. Walking around like I did this on my own. Then things start to go wrong on that job that he gave you. It's stressing me out. It's too much for me to handle. You start messing with your family time, causing the job to take up so much of your time that you just can't handle it. Could it be that that job was supposed to be easy? Could it be that 
it, that was supposed to be the job that was supposed to set you up for the next job. But because I forgot who gave me that job, why I got that job, my relationship, because now I don't have a relationship with him. I forgot it. I forgot that he's the, he's the reason why I got it. So now I'm stressed. I, what's next? I can't come home and cook. I have daughters at home that I can't spend time with. I have all of this stuff going on on this job that he gave me that I asked for that was supposed to be easy, that was supposed to set me up for that next promotion. But because I've got it and now I'm looking down on people, I'm not humble. I'm walking around in the office. I still got my prayer on the wall, but I'm not living it. I still got my gospel music playing, but I'm not living it. I still sit up there, God bless you. You have a nice day. I'm still doing all of that, but I'm not living it. Because in the back of my head, you got to do what I say. I run this now. I'm the boss. But I'm sitting at that desk about to pull my hair out because I'm stressed out. I don't have any time for my kids. I don't have any time for my husband. My relationship at home is there and God forbid church. Oh, I work Sunday, um, Monday through Saturday. Sundays, I'm resting. You won't see me. So now my relationship over here is slacking. Am I paying my tithes? What tithes? What's next? So now I'm stressed out. Then it's, this the one. If you send me a man, a good man, he sends you that man, but he don't look like you want him to look. He ain't making the money you want him to make. So what you do, you go back and say, God, you must have missed me because this ain't the one I asked for. So you go get that one that's stressing you out, ain't treating you right, mishandling you, being disrespectful, treating you like dirt, and he got you wondering what you did wrong. That ain't God. That ain't God. Then you go back to God and you like, you like, God help me, get me out of this. This ain't where I'm supposed to be. And he like, I already gave you what you needed. You rejected it. I gave you what you need, you rejected. Now you stalking this man page on social media or woman, stalking that page on social media, trying to figure out how to get him back. You decided that person wasn't good enough. You decided he didn't make what you wanted him to make. God gave you what you needed. He treated you like a queen. He respected you. He respected your family. And the, the one, the top one is, God was the head of his life. He loved God. But that when you wanted, he looked good. You could show face in front of your friends. You could put a picture of them on Instagram or Facebook. That's the one you wanted. That's the one who's knocking you upside your head and you wonder where you're at. That ain't of God. So stop asking God to give you stuff that you really don't want. Whether it's a job, a man, buying a new house, make sure you seek him first. Hebrews 12 and 25. See not that you do not refuse him who speaks. Have a relationship with God is one of the things that carry me from day to day. There have been times where I was at the point that I wanted to give up, throw in the towel, leaning against the rope. I wanted, I was out. I was out. No one could help me, so I thought. So I would go to him and I would say, God, I'm done. I have no more fight left in me. And he would say to me, you got this. We've been here before. Didn't I bring you out that time? You didn't, you forgot? You forgot who I am? I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. There are no other gods before me. If I brought you through that, you don't think I can bring you through this? I am him. This is what I do. That's how he talked to me. I don't know about y'all, but that's how he talked to me. We, we, on that, we on a different level, like, he talked to me like I'm talking to one of my, my friends. I got you. You gonna get through this? You ain't gotta worry about it. I got you. 
He hears my cries. He dries my tears. He comforts me when everyone in the house is asleep and I can't sleep. He lifts my burdens when I can't carry them on my own. He comforts me when I comforts me when I need to hear my mother's voice after a long day. He's placed great people in my life, but none of them can do what he can do. He hears me when I say protect my daughters and my granddaughters. Exodus 13 and 21, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of a fire to give them light. So go by the day and the night. In 21, he did not take away the pillar of the cloud or the pillar of the fire by night before the people. He's always there. He's always speaking. Are we listening to those around us? Are we listening to ourselves? Because the answer he gives us is not the answer we wanted to hear. Think about that one. For a moment, are we listening to him, ourselves, or the people around us? Hmm. We didn't get the answer we wanted from God. The all-consuming fire who allows you to go through the strange fire caused them around you to wonder because they seen you in it. How did she come out of harm? She don't got one burn on her. She's smelling like a rose and not like smoke. The all-consuming fire that burns but doesn't harm, that adds and doesn't subtract, the fire that forgives and forgets, that shows mercy and forgives us, that shows mercy and gives us grace. That's the kind of fire I want burning in my life. When I just when I think back to what I've been through, to where I am right now, where I'm sitting at right now. Oh my God, I get happy because there has, there have been times when I felt like I have no way else to turn. My family, not my family here, but my family, do they really love me? Do they really accept me for who I am? I have all of those unanswered questions, but then I think like, it doesn't even matter because he accepts me for who I am. He's all I need. He's the only fire I need burning in my life that adds to me and doesn't take away from me. In conclusion, we must first lay aside every weight that's holding us down. Remember, he disciplined us because he loves us and knows what's best for us. He's always speaking. Are we always listening and being obedient when he speaks? God is an all-consuming fire. He can take us through the fire and have us coming out and looking better than we felt before we go in. He is my everything. Is he yours? Can he do it for you? Has he done it for you? Amen.